poison blue. Poison brew. More like poison poo. Cause this update, it, it was all right, I guess. Like the game still suffers from a lack of content, but like it's kind of cool. It feels better than Payday 2 in a lot of aspects. Like the animations are amazing, but the lack of replayability is really holding it back. But after playing Payday 3 from the last update and going back to playing some other co-op games, I realized something fundamentally flawed with Payday 3. And that is the armor system. Simply put, it's bad game design. <laughs> and the band-aid fix that is adaptive armor is not a good enough fix. Payday 3's armor design philosophy is death by a thousand cuts. And put simply, it just doesn't work. Armor in this game is not armor, it's just a second health bar. Even though you can recover some of your armor by hiding and avoiding taking damage, you still take some unavoidable permanent damage. And that right there is the problem, unavoidable permanent damage. To be more specific, what I mean by permanent damage is damage that cannot be restored without spending a resource. In Payday 3's case, you take unavoidable permanent damage because the enemies have hitscan guns and your armor will eventually break, making you have to spend a resource to get your armor back. The idea behind this type of health system is that it incentivizes players to avoid combat whenever possible and to complete the mission as fast as possible. This doesn't make sense on paper for Payday. It incentivizes stealthing as far as you can, even if you know you can't complete the whole thing in stealth, might as well try because you could get a good portion through before the alarm goes off and you start taking damage because you are limited by how much damage you can take. However, in practice, the armor system is just not fun. It forces everyone to run the have more resources build, changing the game from death by a thousand cuts to death by two thousand cuts. Wow. Even with adaptive armor, you still have to spend the resource to get your armor back if it breaks. And this is just not good. It's not the normal buffer that we're used to from Payday 1 and 2. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, looking back at Payday 2, this issue was still there, although it was different and not as severe. Let me ask you this, what is the best deployable in Payday 2? If you said ammo bag, you are WRONG! And even including Bulletstorm, I would still say it's not the best deployable, because people are bad at video games, okay? The deployable that everyone runs is either the doctor bag or first aid kits, and it's because these both help with the most important resource to manage, downs. Health doesn't really matter because there's so many ways to regen it, and getting down really is never a death sentence because Inspire exists. Hell, the legendary teamwork build actually wants to go down to trigger Swan Song. I see that downs are the most important resource to manage in Payday 2 and not in Payday 3 because back in Payday 2, not only is health regen a lot more free, but you have way more iframes when you get revived in Payday 2 compared to Payday 3. It feels like you have no invincibility when being revived in Payday 3, and also because of how the health system in Payday 3 works, you got down because you ran out of health and armor, so if you don't have the resources to spend to get them back immediately, you're just going to go down again instantly because you don't have that buffer of regenerating damage mitigation to work with. The teamwork build being as actually unironically viable as it is shows how horribly balanced Payday 2 is, but that's not the point. The point is that Payday 3 has a flawed health system, so how do we fix it? Well, let's look at some examples of good health systems in other video games and let's see what they have in common. If you have watched any videos on game design, you've probably seen this clip from a GDC talk about the game design of Doom 2016. Our key takeaway from the classics is that if you're not moving, you're dead. To that end, the player restores health by engaging in combat, not abstaining from it. This is the core idea behind good health systems. Playing the game is more fun than sitting behind a corner waiting for your health to come back. The risk reward factor for this type of sustain is what creates engaging gameplay. In Doom, you have to get in close and finish off a stunned enemy to restore health. You have to use flame belch to restore armor and you gotta be in close to use that. Being closer means you have less time to dodge projectiles and can be hit by fast, very devastating melee attacks, but you still have to get in close to heal. 
the idea of staying in the fight to regen health is the basis for all good health systems. And even fucking Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League got this right, okay? So let's look at some other examples that follow this concept. In Ultra Kill, the two ways to heal are through either parrying, which is pretty self-explanatory risk and reward, and the other way is by being close to an enemy when you damage them, healing from their blood coating your body. Not only is this cool lore and gameplay interacting, but it is a risk reward factor for healing. Do you get in close to potentially regain health, but risk dying? In Devil May Cry, the main ways you get health, if you're not a bit, are from random green orb drops from enemies dying, but it's random and not reliable. The main reliable way to get health back is through Devil Trigger. During Devil Trigger, you're stronger in basically every way, including having regenerating health. However, Devil Trigger is a resource, and it's not really worth using DT outside of the combat to heal because you're losing um, the potential damage that DT provides. Because of this, you're gonna want to use your DT when in combat, but it's gonna run out, and the main way that you regenerate Devil Trigger is by playing well. Dealing damage and getting in good dodges gives you some DT, but there's a lot more riskier ways to regenerate even more DT. Taunting can regenerate DT, but it leaves you vulnerable while you wait for the taunt to finish, as you only get the DT back when the taunt finishes. Some character-specific options are with Dante, you can regenerate DT if you land a perfect guard, but only on perfect guards. V can regenerate DT faster if he reads his book, which leaves you more vulnerable. Virgil has possibly the coolest DT regen mechanic, where if you let the full animations of Sheathing Yamato play out, you get some DT back. These animations are long and leave you vulnerable during them, but you can always teleport cancel to make yourself safe. But if you take the risk of letting them play out fully, you get rewarded with DT as well as an opportunity to perform a perfect judgment cut, as well as just being fucking cool. But uh, back to shooters. <laughs> Uh, although these next two examples aren't exactly stay-in-the-fight health systems, they still have risk-reward and are co-op focused, so I think they're good to examine when talking about ways to potentially fix Payday 3's health system. In Killing Floor 2, you have a healing syringe that you can use to heal yourself, and then it goes on cooldown. This cooldown is halved if you heal a teammate with it instead. This incentivizes working together. Outside of that, any class can use a medic weapon, but obviously medics are better with medic weapons. These guns are typically worse than other guns in the same category, but have the bonus effect of being able to heal your teammates. You're giving up your own firepower for the ability to heal teammates at range. Even picking up the super cheap and one weight cost medic pistol has downsides, because even though it is a pretty good strategy just to pick it up to heal teammates, it still does cost weight. My favorite loadout for the demo is RPG and M16, and that gun combo just can't spare the one weight for the medic pistol. The health system incentivizes teamwork rather than engaging in combat to restore your health. Similarly, in Helldivers 2, you can heal yourself with a stim. You can carry up to 4 and 6 with medic armor, and these are basically single-use full heals. You can also use one of your own stims to heal a teammate. The only way to restore stims are to find them around the map or to use resupplies. The resupply has a team-wide cooldown, so if you're out of stims and call it down just to get some stim backs, you're potentially screwing over your teammates on the other side of the map, denying them ammo, grenades, or stims of their own that they could desperately need. You can also run the resupply backpack to resupply yourself and teammates, but this uses a stratagem slot and a backpack slot, meaning that you can't use some of the stronger support weapons like the spear or the autocannon. Now, you might have noticed one thing in common with all of these games mentioned that is not in the Payday series, and that is that all of these games do not have enemies with hitscan guns. Because of that, none of these games have a self-regenerating buffer of health. So let's look at some games that do. Halo is notorious for popularizing the regenerating shield. It lets you take risks without dying, as you have a short window to act before your health, which is much harder to regenerate, takes damage. Warframe also has hordes of hitscan enemies, and you have a regenerating shield with a shield gate like Payday 2's armor gate. Warframe might not be the best example when it comes to a balanced health system, because, well, you know. But it has a lot of similarities with Payday 2. 
both have a gate for their buffer health bar that gives you a bit of invincibility when it breaks, and some builds let you regenerate shield slash armor during this period of, of invincibility to get your armor back. And this right here, this is what Payday 3 needs. It needs a regenerating buffer of health that does not need a resource to restore if fully depleted. And also, with this extra buffer of health, there should be new skills added that interact with it, allowing for more build variety. Now, funnily enough, a system like this actually does exist within the code, but it's unused. And I'll let this clip explain it. Zidane from Mod Workshop found some operational code for this. Uh, Starbreeze had disabled it, but he re-enabled it with mods. This isn't the dodge that we know from Payday 2. But instead, this is a meter that when taking damage and reaches zero, your armor would then take damage. It could then regenerate back to full, giving the player a buffer for taking damage. Now that is kind of Payday 2's armor system, slapped on top of what we already have. And I think this feature should be flushed out more and included as a base feature in Payday 3. Basically, with dodge added, you would have four health bars. You have your health, and then your armor that protects your health and then your adrenaline that protects your armor, and then your dodge that protects your adrenaline. <laughs> now that might sound pretty stupid having four different health bars, but basically your build is going to build into one of these four different types of health. With dodge being added, it would need its own skills and maybe some equipment added or changed to interact with dodge. We could have the lighter armors have a lower dodge value but a higher regen rate, while the bigger armors have a higher dodge value but a slower regen rate. And with some skills to be added that interact with dodge, here's some of my ideas. While you have rush, your dodge value is increased or regens faster. While you have edge, landing a headshot kill consumes that edge to restore your dodge to full. When your dodge depletes, gain or refresh rush. Your armor has 15% less damage resistance, but your dodge value is increased by 10% per plate your armor can hold. Having this buffer that lets you play the game without being punished would just make the game feel better, you know? As it stands right now, Payday 3 is fun, but lacking content. I think the devs need to stop being so attached to their ideas because things like the current armor and modifier system need to be changed drastically. But other than that, I think the only real thing that needs to change with Payday 3 is just having more content. More heists, more heist randomization, more guns, more skills more equipment, just more reasons for me to play the game. If there was just more stuff to do and a reason to play, I think it would be an amazing game. Oh yeah, and can we fucking delete the lead guard?